What's going on guys? Welcome back to Pat Outdoors. Today we're going to be starting a new project with my 2006 Yamaha YZ250. In case you don't follow my channel, I like to do a lot of modifications to dirt bikes and little electric bikes such as these two Razor MX650s. This blue one actually runs on 72 volts and goes 50 miles an hour. So I've always been curious what it would be like to do something similar, but at a much larger scale. So that's exactly what we're doing with this bike. This bike actually runs just fine the way it is right now. Though I took it out to some trails a couple weeks ago and noticed the exhaust smokes quite a bit more than your typical two stroke. But instead of rebuilding this tired motor, I've decided I'm gonna pull everything out and take this opportunity to build something really unique. So today I wanna to start by stripping this bike down to bare frame, and then we'll go over all the components we're planning on using for this project. Here's everything that we've taken off of the bike so far. Got all the plastics, bar pad, air box assembly, rear subframe, exhaust silencer, and the seat. Up next, I'm gonna start working on draining the fuel from the fuel tank, take the tank off. Then we're gonna take off this FMF header pipe, which I believe is just held on by these two tensioner springs and an eight millimeter bolt for the bracket. And hopefully it'll wiggle off easily. Looks like it's been there for a couple of years. So we'll see. And then I wanna take off the CDI components, the computer, the harness. I wanna get as close as I can to being ready to take the motor off by the end of today. Here are the rest of the parts that we just removed from the bike. I'm excited to get this IMS high capacity 3.4 gallon fuel tank taken off the bike since it made it pretty top heavy since when that was fully filled, it weighed almost 24 pounds. And then the FMF gnarly header pipe actually came off pretty easily. It wasn't rusted or anything. Forgot to mention there was a second bracket at the bottom, just a 10 millimeter bolt. And this bike's definitely had a rough life. If you look at the, this is the left radiator. Uh, it's pretty banged up. Looks like a stick pierced through the grill and I'm surprised that wasn't leaking. The left radiator or right radiator had some bent brackets on the outside. So it's had a rough life, but I'm glad that we're converting it to electric. So none of these parts have to go back on. 
These were also filled with fluid, so we should be saving a lot of weight. Before we continue with the teardown, I just want to quickly go over the kit that I'm planning on using for this project. This is the newest QS138 kit offered by Electro & Co. With the 25 kilowatt controller and no battery, it costs $15.49. It comes with almost everything that I need. The motor housing has a built-in bracket and gear reduction that's designed specifically to be fitted on a dirt bike. If you do have other options that you'd like to recommend, please comment below and I'll look further into it. The DKD digital display also shows you your speed, amperage draw, battery life, and be able to flip through different modes. And as far as a power supply, I'm still looking at other options, but so far this is the battery that I'm looking at, which is the 76 volt 32 amp hour lithium pack by Electro & Co, which is $1,700 with the 12 amp charger. It's well protected with a stainless steel enclosure and has a 400 amp BMS built in. So this allows for a continuous discharge of 240 amps which should be plenty of a power supply for the QS138 kit. Let me know if you have a more affordable option that has a similar power output. So here's how we're looking so far. Got the bike all stripped down so I'm pretty much ready to start working on taking out the engine and the gearbox along with the skid plate and a couple more accessories so we can get the chassis deep cleaned before we start doing a reassembly. My whole purpose with this bike is to have something for my wife to ride that she doesn't have to worry about clutching, shifting, or kickstarting over and over again whenever she stalls. But I still want a full-size dirt bike that's even more capable than my KLX and hopefully faster than my KLX. I also want something that I can rip around the neighborhood without attracting all the Karens since it should be a lot quieter than having a two-stroke. All right guys, well that is all I have energy for today, but we are gonna continue working on this YZ for the rest of the week. If you enjoyed today's video or found it helpful in any way, do me a favor and hit that like button. And if you like this kind of content, you wanna keep up with some of my projects, consider subscribing to this channel. But this is gonna be it for today. Thank you for watching.